got the distance. He missed the major target, though. And the first score of the quarter is a behind. The Swans lead by three points after 75 seconds in the second term. Here's big, strong Roger. One of the most valuable players in league football for the last four or five years. Looking for Cunningham, who makes a big leap in front. Quick out to Neagle. Neagle, 45 to 50 metres. Dodges brilliantly and drives for goal. Splendid, spectacular, solo effort. And Merv Neagle missed that one just a few moments ago. But really showed his class in that one. This is the young man, or the elderly man, as far as football's concerned now, Ken, who was second in the Brownlow medal just some years ago. And full marks once again to Barry Mitchell, who's been a terrific player around the packs for the Swans. And it was he who uh, grabbed that ball and quickly shot that hand pass out to Merv, who loves to run with the ball. And we've mentioned before, Doug, he doesn't look all that quick because he's got a bustling style of, of running, but certainly it's very effective. And a veteran, as Doug said, of 175 games. Madden the big thump out of the centre. And the Bombers might yet capitalise. Browning in the path, though. Ball up, surely. No, push in the back. Essendon free kick. Swans free kick. And Paul Hawke takes it at half-back. Man in space is right on the centre line. Hand passes on to Mitchell. He does it on his own and does it well. Goes long for Kappa. Front position, Merritt the big thump. He's been superb since he went to fullback. Now Healy roving to Thrip. Bayes on the wrong boot. Capper under it. Danaher from behind, throw in the result. Swans deep in attack. Well, Capper's really got some talent against him. If Roger Merritt's not there, across comes the wonderful captain, Danaher. And it's a great credit to Warwick Capper. That's what opposing coaches think of him now. Out wide, Bayes again. Shoots for goal and bad luck. It just bundled, it trundles across the face of goal out of bounds. But the effort was pretty close, and it'll be thrown in. So just beyond the three-minute mark, the Swans have kicked 1-1 in the term. Essendon haven't scored. Merritt, um, uh, Madden rather, winning all the ruck duels. Elshaw had nowhere to go. Mitchell, likewise. Push in the back, says umpire Kappa. Throw in, says umpire Robinson, and he's the one that really counts. That's so true. What a big leap by Bayes over the top of Madden. I'm not quite sure what that could be possibly given for, but the free kick goes to Simon Madden. Bayes certainly had eyes on the ball and got the punch down, but Simon Madden kicks it very nicely to his captain, Terry Danaher. Let's get to hold the ball. And the play on. Heard gets it. Back to Madden. Madden will give it short to Keane. Keane wisely steadies. Terry Danaher was touched. He's got a hurry with it. Shane hurt has got lots of time. Back to Keane. Keane sends it long down to centre wing position. Nice leap there by Neil Cordy. Henwood fighting for it too. Spencer's kick taken away from him. Holden is underneath it. Through Henwood it goes. Lots of mistakes just for the few moments. Holden down again. It's very hard to get a kick here at the moment. William Duckworth with the ball. His West Australian teammate, Henwood, he aims right at, misses him. Umpire says free kick. To Thrip. On the centre line. Kicks to half forward. Oh, well taken by Neagle. Didn't look to be in good position, but in fact judged it to a nicety. And will kick from 55 metres out. And he could give this a shake. It's long. Oh, it's a beautiful kick. Two goals in this quarter to Neagle. He's had four scoring shots. The first two were minors, but hasn't he made up for those? And the Swans leading by 15 points after five minutes in the second term. And we've just been told that David Murphy has a badly sprained ankle and is unlikely to be back. Well, he has been a very, very good player, uh, particularly in this quarter with two goals so early in the match. Paul Hamilton played on him in the first part of that quarter and did well, but Hamilton is now playing on Tony Morwood, and we see Peter Francis now playing in this quarter on Merv Neagle. So that move for uh, Hamilton onto Tony Morwood uh, hasn't been really successful in the fact that uh, that's enabled Neagle to boot two quick goals. Byrne gets a free kick. Here's a chance for Simon Madden. Maybe he should have taken that. It comes back to himself. Then he wanted a hand pass. Stephen Wright out wide. Warwick Kappa goes for it. Mitchell's with it. Mitchell's hand pass back and underneath it heard. But I think the ball was over the line out of bounds before he kicked it. So it'll be taken back to the boundary umpire to throw it in. Not 
much between them last year. The Swans had the double chance but lost both their finals. Essendon only had one chance. And that went begging in the elimination final. Beaten by a point by Fitzroy. Of course, the Swans bowing out to the same team also by one kick in the first semi. Six and a half minutes gone. Swans deep in attack and starting this second quarter as they started the first with a rush. Mitchell out on the full. Free kick to be taken by Merritt, who wants to play on. The umpire says you've got to come back and kick the ball over your mark because you've been outside the field of battle. And Merritt, a great battler at fullback, going into the trouble spot when Kappa started so well. Burn, a beauty from behind, off to Healy. Long towards full forward. Kappa won't be there in time. Morewood is. Now Kappa and Merritt. Well played by Roger the Lodger again. And Cunningham helps it over the line. Throw in on the Swans half forward flank. And Kevin Sheedy has moved now his skipper. Terry Danaher onto the forward line and he's now playing on the half forward flank. Well Kappa's going to be, have to be conscious of that big fellow on him all the time. Nice hand pass there by Elshaw to Francis. A very gallant smother by Morewood. Gives a chance to Hawk. Hawk to Brown, the left footer. He can make the distance. And it's a magnificent kick. Oh, he's loving it. And it is wonderful to see Mark Browning, who served this club so well. And as Kevin said earlier, just all the little talk about now, this may be Browning's last year. He comes on for his 245th match, and he's playing beautifully. Well, one of the problems that... Uh that happened to Mark Browning early in the season was that his kicking, which we've seen here today, the two beautiful goals, really started to let him down where the ball was just flopping off his boot. He wasn't getting any penetration, and his kicking was letting the opposition in. And uh, many felt that once his kicking had left him, that maybe Mark Browning was going to struggle to hold his place in the swan side. Good move by the Dons. The final move comes to Duckworth. Long with the left boot. It is a beauty. What a goal. Billy Duckworth has kicked a few this year. He doesn't mind kicking them. And give him a chance and he'll grab it. A ripper and the margin back to 15 points. Well, there's Terry Danaher moved now to the half-forward flank across to Daryl Cunningham. He just gets it across to Billy and a magnificent left-foot shot. Of course, he started the game on the bench, but when he was brought onto the ground, when Winton left and Merritt went to full back, he then went to the forward line. And, uh, well, that's... Uh, that's one move that's worked with him booting that goal so early in the second quarter. And that's Wild Billy's 13th goal for the season. Madden a big lead. Browning in the thick of things. Left footed out wide where Morwood will do battle with Hamilton. Hamilton's in good position. Recovers well Morwood. That's nice courageous football. Across the bows goes Hawk. Bays kicks off the ground straight to Kappa. And Kappa does the umpire pay it as long enough. 15 metres. I think he has. There was some doubt in everybody's mind as to whether the kick could travel far enough to be played a mark. And look at them crashing on him, Nobby Clark. And 15 metres will make it an absolute certainty for Kappa to kick his third goal. He was a bit tempted to run on, yeah, I think. He didn't run on. I think no, it was quite, quite obvious right. that it, it, the thought went through his mind, but he didn't put the, uh, the, the thought in his mind into actual action. He, he almost was, did. The he radar did. was there. He knew what was around him. It was poised high in the air. And it certainly would have been foolish, as was proved, he can't miss that one, that's his third. A little bit fortunate, that one, but well done, Warry Kappa, nevertheless. The Swans have booted four goals for one in this quarter. They've played exactly ten minutes, so it's been a great opening. This is a very intelligent bit of play there by Mark Bays, who just kicked it off the ground. And I figured that he saw Warry Kappa there by himself when he kicked it off the ground, because he came down through centre-half forward, it was a very intelligent piece of play. The Opera House Swans looking good, as they did in the first term. They've opened up with four goals to one at the start of the quarter, and that's happened in ten minutes. Brilliant stuff by the uh, underdogs depleted in this match. The ball will come back for another bounce, almost in the centre circle. But the Swans have been winning the hard ball in this quarter. The Bombers are about, about to make a change. Chris Danaher getting his first chance for Essendon. Peter Francis is on his way off the ground. Ball bounced on the centre line. Mitchell, good rover for the Swans. Neagle, a star in this quarter. Trip from 55 metres out. Long. Capper and Merritt one out. How will it bounce? Right! The Swans get their 10th. 
And they lead by 27 points at the 11 minute mark. And that was quite unbelievable because Peter Francis, who's been playing on Merv Neagle, was running off the ground onto the interchange bench when Chris Danaher was coming on. Merv Neagle won the ball and then kicked it down into the goal square. It was as if for about 10, 15, 20 seconds of that quarter, or that piece of play, that the Essendon side was, in fact, one man short in actual playing mm. on the actual arena. And uh, that was quite unbelievable because generally you would change the interchange at an opportune time, not at that particular time when uh, the action was still taking place. Yep, you're quite right. Brett Scott boots them into attack once again. Nice trap. Strong football to Hawk. Hawk long to Bays. Bays downfield. And he's rampant. He dribbled it through. And the Swans cannot make a mistake at this stage. Everything going right for them. And Mark Bays, who slowly, or maybe quickly, maturing into the player we thought he might become a star. Well, once again, Neagle across to Hawk, Hawk across to Bays. And it's those running players. Mitchell's been very good. Nagel's been sensational. Hawk is starting to come into the game. And Bays has done very well across that half forward line. Kicking that ball off the ground before to Kappa and then ramming one home himself. And this is real, this is real action. It's not the slow motion replay. And that's at the Essendon attacking end of the ground. Simon Madden. Surprised to see Rod Carter in there. And Wayne Henwood looking as though he means business with Trevor Spencer trying to keep him out of it all. Well, Salmon's in the ruck and uh, Simon's gone down to full forward. And maybe that's the way Rod Brett's all full forward. <laughs> and a big cut. It. <laughs> that's the two seniors on the ground. They both started their career in 1974. And look at them, very unfriendly. The Swans have kicked 5-1 to one goal in 12 and a half minutes in this quarter. It's been a real blitz and they're playing brilliantly. Salmon in ruck for Essendon now against Byrne with Madden up at full forward and Salmon gets the big fist onto it. Cordy for the Swans. Tripp doing well on the wing in this turn. Supported by Tui. Walsh and Bays. Now Mitchell. Healy, clever kick. Hawker on the half-back flank. Stemming the flow for the moment. 15 metres against Neagle. And the Bombers need respite. And they also need a goal because they trail by the best part of five. Clark, now Hamilton, running through the centre. Long towards Madden. Too far for Madden. He's out his only supporter there. Well played, Carter. Frustrates the Bombers. Forces a throw in in their forward pocket. And Herb Neagle now has his third opponent with Glenn Hawker. Now having a job after Hamilton and Francis have both been taken off. Byrne doing very well. Hand pass comes to Mitchell. Mitchell then gets it across to Brett Scott. Scott to Holden is magnificent. Holden down towards the half forward flank. In front was Morewood. Clark is with it. Hawk takes him on and the ball over the line. But there was a clear indication of how quickly the Swans are moving the ball down the field as they whipped it down. Four or five players in the action. It's on their half forward line. Halfway through the turn. So far, one the Bombers would like to forget. Neagle again in the action to Mitchell. The left footer around the boundary line. Kappa trying to keep it in. Eventually taking it over. The throw in to take place 30 metres from the behind post. Swans deep in attack. And the ball has spent almost all its time in this quarter, in this half of the ground. The Swans, five goals to one. Right tackle. No, no free kick. Liberal umpiring. Hawk quickly. Neagle for his third. Kappa. Oh, he played on and kicked a goal. His fourth. Oh. And Kevin Sheedy with the pokerest face you'd ever see. If that's the superlative for poker. And the Swans have been superlative, kicking seven goals in this quarter in 15 and a half minutes. A bit of a risk there by Warwick Kappa. When you mark like that, there's not much sense. Let's have a look at it. Here's Kappa taking the mark virtually straight in front. There would have been no angle, and to play him like that was a silly move. It came off. It was it was quite lucky that the, the way he was swung just enabled the ball to go through. Almost but certainly Neagle once again, uh, right in the thick of things. Reminiscent of that Murray Keane goal where he laid on his <laughs> back and kicked it. In the centre of the ground, Eston fighting for it. Nice play through. Recovers well. Gives a chance to Cordy. Brilliant to right. 
White steadies. Oh, this is beautiful. Meagles off again. Out to Bays. Taken away by Scott. Scott's going to have a left foot shot for goal. And Scott is going to goal. That was absolutely magnificent. Well, this is one of the best forms of football that you'll ever wish to see. Eight goals in 16 and a half minutes. And they're not touching the ball. Look at this, Neagle. Here they go. Well, you're right, Doug. They are not touching the ball. And there was Bayes. He could raffle that with Brett Scott. And they're just running the ball so well. You've got Scott. You've got Mitchell. You've got Wright. You've got Hawk. You've got Healy. They're absolutely dominating this quarter, and the Essendon players, and I think that's the best way of summing it up, as you said, Doug, not touching the ball. And when Neagle hand-passed, he didn't even look to see where it was going. He was so sure that there would be a Swans player running onto it. 17 minutes gone, and this has been a blitz. 83 plays 38. The Bombers into attack. At long last, Danaher, Chris, towards Madden. Carter bearing down. Good hand-pass. Keen. From 30 metres out on the angle, it's a good kick. It's a goal. It's a beauty. They're second for the quarter. They've both been absolute gems. One by Duckworth and now one by Keane. But they're still 39 points down. Well, Simon resting at full forward with Paul Salmon in the ruck. That is a great snap by young Gavin Keane. Beautiful kick. Tell you what, Kev, they won't be able to fit Greg Williams back in the side on this one. And Alan Ezard, who beat two goals in the first quarter, but uh, has nearly frozen down uh, in the forward pocket, has now been brought onto the ball. And same with Salmon, of course. Madden having a rest. Second time that Essendon have fringed and come across the square. Free kick goes to Byrne, who's done well in nullifying what could be the uh, winning part of Madden. Here they go again, out wide to Wright. Wright's got a lot against him. Hawk is with it. Hawker boots it downfield in front. The mark is almost taken there by Merritt. Henwood very nice. Now it comes to Browning, he's caught. A long hand pass goes past Hawker. Kevin Walsh comes in, in trouble, does it well, past Henwood, runs into a barrage of Swans Guernseys. Wonderful defensive football by the Swans. Walsh simply couldn't break through and they forced a bounce. Free no, the free the kick bombs. goes to Hawker. And they're lucky. I thought Walsh just about threw that and could well have been penalised. Away goes Hawker. Their latest half-back flanker to try and quell Neagle. Well taken by Big Roger. He's been penalised for interference. And Hawk takes the free kick from behind the centre. Not well placed. Mitchell in hard. He's been a real terrier. Johnston, subterranean kick, but straight back to Hawk. Lovely one out wide. Holden on the wing nothing there for the swans on the flank salmon down in defense kappa now healy quick as a flash but so was salmon's interception holding the ball free kick to essendon salmon the man to take it and winter is back it? on the ground and he's gone to fullback and merritt up the ground in an attacking position at center half forward on henwood will be some blood and thunder Merritt versus Henwood downfield it goes towards the centre Terry Danaher in front Henwood was the leaper nice pick up by Hawk beautiful evasive run then kicks it downfield Hawk is underneath it beaten by a magnificent interception by Merv Meagle who if anyone has been the star of the court he's kicked 2-1 been in everything and Merv Meagle playing an inspired game against his old team Stephen Oakley Mitchell in front and Mitchell takes the mark and Mitchell is bleeding. And Mitchell we saw at the airport as we landed today. Must have come up from Melbourne this morning. And what a fine piece of play by Neagle once again. Well, Mitchell and Neagle are vying for best on ground. There's no doubt about that. Mitchell, particularly in that first quarter, was dominating when Tony Olshaw has been taken from the field and Peter Francis to come back on. Mitchell shoots for goal. And he's done it well. Again, it really has been a magnificent quarter of attacking football by the Sydney Swans and their diesel, their dynamo, Greg Williams in the stand disqualified watching it is not what was expected. And Barry Mitchell, uh, not that old now, but as a kid was a red-hot Richmond supporter and uh, always fancied uh, playing for the Tigers, but uh, lived in uh, Swans territory at Clayton Way. And, uh, there was some doubt that he, that he would stay in Sydney when the Swans uh, made all players shift up here permanently because he was one of the players who used to travel up. But uh, 
lucky he did because he's a great player at the moment. Nine goals in 20 minutes to the Swans. Hamilton, well brought down by Morwood. Bays, the long left footer. Kappa comes from behind. Winton, oh, what a leap. And the kick is through for a behind. What a leap by Kappa. Had he got up a centimetre higher, he might have had it in the fingertips and it would have been the mark of the decade. Very similar to the one he took uh, in the forward pocket. Yep, almost uh, a dead ring. Against Michael, Michael Passmore. Yes, he's taken a couple here that have been absolutely exciting this season. Here's Peter Francis back on the ground. Francis down in the direction of Chris Danaher. Merritt and Browning are there. Ezart's got trouble in front of him. Gets away from it well. Sends it down in the Simon Madden direction. Rod Carter against him. Madden recovers well. Out to the flank it goes. Keen loses the run of it. And off goes Tui. And Tui's got time to keep running. Long hand pass goes out to centre wing. Brett Scott's been a good player. Scott then drives to Bays. Wonderful pass and wonderful mark. Bays is just full of uncanny skills. Bays a long way out now. Sends it down quickly from behind. Chance for Hawke. Turns and dodges away from Hamilton. Shoots for goal. But it's just off direction, one behind. Had a little push in the back for Hawke uh, at the back of that pack, and the umpire didn't see it. To enable that ball to come over the back. He was in a wrong position, the umpire to pick that one up. 47-point lead to the Swans. Who would have expected it? Who would have believed it? Hawker at half-back. Where to go? They've got nowhere to go. The ring's been cut in half by the Swans. Well played by Keane to pull forward, but Carter unopposed. <laughs> and 15 metres against Daryl Cunningham as there's a fight on between Duckworth and a player who's lying beneath Duckworth's flailing body. Meanwhile, play goes on. It's to the Swans' advantage. Cork to Thrip was beautiful. He's fought to the centre line. Now Byrne, 55 metres from goal. Bays back to Thrip. And it's number 10 for the corner. And the Swans are unstoppable. They lead by 53 points. Well, Tim, I dare say that uh, the 23 and a half minutes that we've seen this quarter would rank about the best I've ever seen a side play. And uh, I've been associated with Woody for a long time, but I don't think we could ever say that we've seen a side play as well as the Swans have in this first 23 and a half minutes. We saw them absolutely kill the Eagles. We put that down to the fact that the Eagles were an inferior side and that the Swans, you know, really uh, had hit a purple patch. But the play against a side like Essendon has had some big wins and have got some great players. And to play this particular brand of football in the second quarter, I'm not talking about the whole game, but just in this second quarter, I feel that I don't think we've seen football as good for a long time. Doug, what do you think? Magnificent, Kevin. The man that Duckworth was giving the treatment to and giving it to with a vengeance was Gerard Healy. Underneath it all, Scott gets another one. Long one downfield by Thompson. Over the back it goes, and here's an opportunity for Browning to do battle with Cunningham. But Billy Duckworth, one of the toughest and roughest people in the game, has really had Gerard Healy on the ground and pummeling him at one stage. And uh, Gerard Healy, who's played a lot of football, has learned how to retaliate as when he's under trouble, but he took on a big one in that one. Chance for the Bombers. Big swinger from Cunningham, who is a natural left footer, but it doesn't carry. Cover! And delivers nicely to half-back, although a little bit riskily. Cunningham has it taken away by Cordy. Francis, sandwich between three. Cordy, throw in. Essendon's half-board flank. We've just ticked into time on. The Swans, 97. The Bombers, 44. The Swans kicked a club record when they topped 200 against the Eagles last week. Goodness, could they go on and do it again? They'd have to repeat their first half in the second. I don't think uh, we could possibly expect that might just be asking too much Bays star in this quarter but they've had 20 of them Healy bounce to Morwood Hamilton kicking into his teammate Danaher nothing going right for the Bombers ball up on the center line well, Terry Danaher now has been put down onto Mark Bays he started off uh, in defense went to the forward line now he's uh, back in defense again umpire Robinson Ruckman, Byrne and Salmon, even, Walsh caught, Healy with the ball, gets it down towards the half-forward flank, it's over the line, out of bounds. 
Well, Bill Duckworth decided he's going to rough things up, if nothing else, to see if he can stop this unbelievable onslaught by the brilliant Swift Sydney Swans. Well played, Sam, and that was well, nicely done, but straight up in there was the kick to Francis. Thompson hits it out in front of him. Onto an awkward right foot. In front, the mark was almost taken by Chris Danaher. Follows on strongly, gets it across to Salmon. Salmon under pressure and trouble to Walsh. Walsh in the centre of the ground decides to kick and kicks it well to Bomber Thompson. He can now kick it downfield to Ezard. Simon Madden chipped in front of him and took the mark. There were two of them there. It was a perfectly delivered kick. Uh, Ezard had given the lead and given the call, and then Simon Madden chipped in front and takes the mark. And there'll be no doubt about this one because Madden was only about 15 metres from goal when he comes in to put foot to ball. Here comes Big Simon. Stabbed it through. Very effective way of kicking with the big fellow. He's topped their goal kicking a couple of times as Madden and puts them slowly back into the race. Put the scoreboard in favour of the Sydney Swans. A magnificent second quarter, 15-7 to 8-2. Kevin Walsh across to Bomber Thompson. Bomber Thompson's done a couple of nice things, particularly in that first quarter, but really the Essendon side has hardly had a good player this quarter. I don't think they've had a winner. Maybe Paul Hamilton has been able to keep uh, Tony Morwood quiet, and that's a pretty good feat when you consider that there's been an avalanche of goals this quarter. Almost 28 minutes gone. It'll be a long one. 13 goals kicked in the term, 10 by the Swans, and time for the Swans to kick one or two more yet. Topped the 100 in the first half. Walsh trying to lift Essendon. Out wide, Chris Danaher kept it in, did well. Cordy running onto it and won the exchange. Healy to Mitchell. In a hurry to the centre line. Salmon lurking, kick behind play. Where to go? Gone. Thompson brought down. Salmon cleverly off the ground. Merritt, good paddle, but too far for Terry Danaher. Scott. On his non-preferred boot, so he tried to hand pass. It was a mistake. Salmon. Merritt. Clark. Now Mitchell winning those hard kicks. And a throw in on the Swans half forward flank. Well, Salmon battled wonderfully for a big fellow there because uh, it's a long way down to the ground for him to really get into the, the on-ground play, but he did it nicely. Salmon gets it down this time. Thrip is leading for the ball, but the ball beats him over the line out of bounds. Thompson is the Essendon player. Bomber Thompson, back pocket over previous years, has relished his opportunity to play on the ball. He's been one of Essendon's best players for the season. Salmon nicely. Thrip again boots it downfield. Awkward bounce goes past Hurd. And slithers there over the line with Kappa and Winton fighting for it. But the ball is out of bounds, so it'll be thrown off. Across the 29 minute mark. Still a couple of minutes left. And the Swans deep in attack. Bayes comes from behind Salmon. Healy. Neagle. Deserves a goal to close out the quarter. So does Mitchell. So does Kappa. They all deserve plaudits for a really great quarters football. And paid the ultimate compliment by Kevin Bartlett, who played over 400 games, about the best he's seen. And it really has been that good. Hawker back to the centre line. Where are the scouts? Duckworth. Pushed in the back. Obvious free kick. And Bustling Billy takes it on the wing. Bustling Billy's not in a good mood. And he's showing everybody why he's not. A beautiful leap there by Merritt. But Browning was infringed upon by Cunningham. And the free kick will go to Mark Browning who's got plenty of reason to be happy with his game too. Two magnificent goals. Long left foot kick. Oh, fine mark. Tripped from behind over the top of Bayes. Splendid mark. Trip then drives a good looking pass towards Healy. Lands just inside the line. Over the line it goes out of bounds. Heard being the permanent custodian of Healy. Healy's had a battle with Duckworth. And won't forget this game. And who would if they played for the Swans? Good sharking by Mitchell. Outstanding for the Swans. Has a look. Where's Kappa? He thinks to himself. Doesn't deliver too well. And well played, Winton. A rare victory. Out wide to Keane, who's got the jump on hold. The ball might beat him. No, it doesn't. He's on half back and got players inside. Hawker. Back to Keane. 
Chip pass is good to Hamilton on the centre line. And the Bombers set up a late attack, but a bad kick. And Browning, who's done so well, acting captain, to come off the interchange bench and kick two inspiring goals, holds out the Bombers once more and delivers another bomb of a kick. 60 metres out to Morwood. Morwood's off. Fine hand pass to Neagle, who's been absolutely brilliant. The bustling Merv has gone too far. Healy gets a hand pass out to Scott. Scott's under lots of pressure, but he's front man and bustles the ball right to the boundary line, still at the boundary line, and falling all over the top of him there was Hawker, and Hawker's going to take the free kick. Almost at the 32-minute mark. Gets it off to Johnston, under pressure. It just crossed the line on the full. Awkward one for the boundary umpire. Warwick Kappa sprinting after that to be the closest man. And I think he was anyway, but he gets the free and he's within range. He'll kick from 35 metres out, but on the tightest angle. In fact, the fence quite close to the boundary line and he can't... <laughs> what a shot. He's got the yes and the middle leg behind him giving him some advice. Well, boys representing the yes and the middle leg. He can set them an example, show them how it's done. He's kicked four. Look at it. That's a beauty. Ooh. Just missed. Got a great shot there. The Swans might go to half-time a couple of points short of the 100, but with as handsome a lead as anyone would have imagined at the halfway mark. Here's the skipper. Caps the ball to himself, foot over the line, kicks it short, dangerous. Thompson will get him out of it. Hawk tackled late. Thompson, a very strong and courageous player. They may as well go long because they may as well try to score at the end of the quarter. Nice punch down in front from Holden and Neil Cordy leads in the race. Easily out wide. Tui then steadies and sends a 50 metre one straight to Bays. Their kicking has been absolute copybook. Bays long and high looking for Kappa. Kappa two to one against him. Mitchell's there to give assistance. Kappa claims it, slings his left foot at it and has bustled over the line there by Winton. But Kappa's proving a tremendous handful, Kevin. Well, their direct kicking uh, gets the ball down to that area where the backmen get the jitters, and uh, he was a bit stiff then, Kappa. Oh, Bays, a huge leap. Hawker, tackled by Mitchell. Salmon, out to half-back. Walsh. Tui almost holding it on his chest, a ball up now between centre and half-forward. And finally, after almost 34 minutes, again leading by 48 points, and the Bombers virtually having to win this to give themselves a real crack at the uh, top five place in the finals in 87. And they've won first use of the ball out of the centre, a free kick. Going there.